Hi, my name's Courtney, and I'm going to clicker train my dog, Stanley. He is six months old, and he's a puppy, so it's going to be a very interesting journey. The first question that I raise is, what exactly is conditioning to a clicker? Um, it's simply just training the dog to respond to the sound of the click. So how do you get started? Well, you're going to need a secondary reinforcer and a primary reinforcer. The secondary reinforcer in this case is the clicker, and the primary reinforcer in this case is the treats, because the dog obviously loves the treats. Um, what you need to do is, for the first week, you just need to simply click, and then you need to treat. And you do that probably 25 times a day, probably three times a week, and get him used to the sound of the clicker and have him associate it with the treats. I'm going to show you how I conditioned Stanley to the clicker. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. What is free shaping? That's the question that I need to answer. It is simply taking a behavior that your dog performs naturally and voluntary and refining it to the clicker, letting the dog get acquainted to the sound of the click when he does something cute. The behavior that I free shaped was Stanley giving me his paw. And I picked this because he's just a puppy, so I taught him how to give me paw using the clicker and using treats. Here's Stanley giving me paw. Paw. Good boy. Paw. Good boy. Paw. Paw. Good boy. Now I'm going to tell you what adding a cue means. Adding a cue means saying a word or phrase that the dog can associate with a certain behavior. A good example would be telling a dog to sit. If the dog sits, then he associates the word sit with him sitting down. Now I'm going to add a cue word to Stanley's behavior. The cue word that I pick is down. So now I'm going to have him perform that. Stanley, come here. Down. Good boy. I'm going to tell you about partial reinforcement. This is when the dog gets rewarded for doing a behavior, but not every single time that he does the behavior. The purpose is so that Stanley does not get lazy and he does not get used to just getting a click and treat and it makes it a little more hard for him and he has to actually think about what he's doing. So I'm going to make Stanley perform the behavior two times, which is called a twofer, and then after he gets used to that, then I'm going to make him perform the behavior three times, which is called a threefer. All right, now I'm going to show you partial reinforcement. I'm going to ask Stanley to give me his paw, and I'm not going to reward him until he does it two times. Stanley, come here. Paw, paw, good boy. Paw, paw, good boy. One more. Paw, good boy. So what exactly is targeting? Targeting is getting your dog to perform a specific behavior. And you can use targeting to teach tricks like sit up, crawl, bow, and spin. What you want to do is you want to start out using a stick. It can be any length or size depending on the size of your dog. As for me, I could either use a toilet paper holder, a spoon, or a pen. Now what works best for me is the toilet paper holder. And what you want to do is you want to hold the, the stick right in front of your dog and you want to get him to touch it, and then, or if he shows any interest in it, then you click and treat. And if he doesn't show any interest in it, then you can dab a couple, a little bit of peanut butter or cream cheese on it for the first couple times. But he should show interest in it after that. Now we're going to do targeting. I'm going to use the toilet paper holder as the target stick. What exactly is extinction? Extinction is when you do not reinforce a behavior. Extinction deals with ways to decrease unwanted behaviors in our pets. As for me, Stanley is a very nervous peer, and every single time that I come home from work or school, he urinates all over me. So I decided that I wanted to extinguish this behavior. So what I did, did was um, I used to talk to him in a very excited way and because I'd be so excited to see him after a long day of him being in the crate and he just couldn't control it and he would pee all over the place. So now when I come home, I don't say anything to him. I don't look him in the eye. I just leash him up and I take him right out to pee. 
and he doesn't get excited, he doesn't get overexcited, and then right when he urinates in the grass, then I click and treat, and that's how I extinguish his behavior. So what exactly is differential reinforcement? This is another method that we use to decrease unwanted behaviors in our pets. The goal that we are trying to reach is we want to decrease unwanted behaviors, and we do this by substituting acceptable ones. So one of the behaviors that I do not like that Stanley does is he will jump all over me or jump on like guests that come into the house. So I'm going to sh show him that if he does that, then it's not acceptable. And I'm going to do this by every time he's on all four of his paws, then he gets a click and treat. <gasps> I think that they think they're the same way as football fans. Uh, this, this what is generalization? Generalization is having our dogs performed perform learned behaviors in a number of different places. This is really hard to do because dogs get so used to, to doing learned behaviors in one specific place. It's called the living room effect. So in the next video, Stanley will perform sitting and paw in a variety of different places to see if he really knows how to sit and give a paw. Okay. Sit, paw, paw. Good boy. Come here. Sit, paw. Good boy. Sit. The last thing I'm going to teach Stanley is how to chain behaviors. When chaining behaviors, you perform two or more behaviors and then you add a cue. And what I'm going to do for Stanley is I'm going to make him sit give me paw, lay down, and then speak, and then add a cue, and then click and treat. Sit, paw, lay down, speak, speak. No.